Welcome to the next edition of my deep dive series where we take a look at each NFL team, come up with a realistic projection for them next season. And we're going through the New York football giants, Danny Dimes and the Funky Bunch, if you will. And I do this not based on a power ranking. I do each episode based on where I think they'll fall in line in the draft because we're going to do a 2023 NFL mock draft at the end of this because i'm better known for my draft content by the way prospect rankings maybe you'll be out in the next month uh, i've been crushing it lately uh, i'm on the defense right now going through corners and uh there the, the, it's fun it's fun i'll say that but okay, let's let's go ahead let's take a look at the roster and let's talk about this team for a little bit and we're gonna obviously go over the offense first because we got we got an overhaul and well overhaul in general when it comes to the coaching staff but with brian deball um coming from buffalo he brings in mike uh was it kafka i remember when this cat was uh quarterback at northwestern it's just wild seeing him in the uh in the uh nfl now as a coach but they come in and you sh we should just expect a heavy reliance on the passing game uh, Kafka used to be a passing game coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the, 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 I think this will help get that final question answered. Is Daniel Jones our franchise quarterback? You're going to get a definite answer this year. The Giants, they're going to be running maybe a spread. There's sort of this dynamic West Coast like offense, something that would mirror uh, similarly what they did in Buffalo, even in Kansas City to some regard. Buffalo, they ran 11 personnel over 71% of the time, which was fifth most in the NFL. They ran 10 personnel, the third most in the NFL last year, where they basically had maybe one guy in the backfield. Like, that's that's wild they're, they're, i mean it doesn't surprise me they went out and got more receivers but we'll get to the receivers in a minute because i have a few questions when it comes to that but we're also going to see a lot of play action in this offense that was the buffalo was most in the nfl in play actions they were tied for fourth in rpos which means they're going to want to get guys like Kadarius tony saquon barkley uh wandale robinson who they just drafted this year very involved and get these guys who can really make plays after the catch so yeah i expect a lot of a lot of crossing routes a lot of mesh concepts uh just to get these wide receivers to basically run open run wide open so biggest question obviously is at the qb position being danny dimes danny nichols at some points uh you're gonna get an answer is this guy the quarterback and uh, i like what they did because protection's been a huge issue for the giants and it's like, how can we get an accurate assessment of Daniel Jones when he's being hit so often and so early, resulting in fumbles? It's kind of became it kind of became a meme last year with how quickly he was hit. But they really, really went out and tried to improve the offense and I or the offensive line. And I think they did so in, in regards to Evan Neal was a banger pick. I love Evan Neal. He was my top tackle going into the draft last year so he's going to come in probably slot in a right tackle they signed uh mark glowinski who's probably like most i i'd all i'd always refer to glowinski back in uh indianapolis as he was the fifth fifth best player on that offensive line in indianapolis which means he got a really good offensive line because he is an average to above average starter and that's what you want you want all five positions to be at least average if you can have a good offensive line you can't just have one very good player and expect it to be to run all spick and span so they grabbed him he's gonna probably come in and rep reprise his role at right guard and then john flaciano who follows uh, brian dayball from uh, buffalo and it looks like he's actually going to end up being the center, which because uh, obviously Nick Gates, he's going through the whole uh, the neck injury. So could be serious. Don't know if that guy's playing football again. My the biggest question right now, because you got again, you look at this line, Andrew Thomas, Evan Neal, they have a chance to be a hell of a duo uh, in the NFL. Then you got Glowinski, which is like, yeah, that's a solid starter of uh, Flaciano. He's ah, he's like average to replacement level uh level of starter so 
that's fine, I guess. But you don't want if if you're starting Shane Lemieux, if this is the same Shane Lemieux we have seen of like the last two years, you want no part of him in the starting lineup. That's why I'm probably gonna have Joshua uh, as as Woodoo. <sighs> Can never get his name down. The North Carolina uh, guard. You're gonna want. You're gonna at least hope maybe he started. I know it's not ideal starting rookies on the offensive line right away and expecting success, especially once you draft day three. Which uh, for Joshua here, I had a day or I had a day three grade. He goes day two actually, third round. But I think it'd be better than Shane Lemieux. They do have Max Garcia, but still, I mean, ugh, he's been not great everywhere he's been. I mean, I think, wasn't he drafted initially by the Patriots and he didn't even play a game for him? Maybe he did. I can't remember. He's been around the league. He's He's been around. They have Matt Pert, who's a guy I've... I've I've been a big fan of because I was a big mark for him in the draft and he's never really got in his time to shine but that's very good depth in my opinion uh Ben Breedson nothing special man they even brought in the other guard there out of North Carolina in the fifth round and Marcus uh McKeithen uh, I think a guy maybe might be a surprise if he makes the roster but someone I really liked is Josh Rivera's out of um or Rivaz out of Kansas State. He's this uh phone booth close quarters type of guard. Uh so just a guy maybe to keep on your radar if he makes the squad. I kind I kind of liked him, but the offensive line it looks better. Doesn't mean it's going to be good next year, but I think there's promise. Now let's talk about the weapons cuz there's weapons on this offense. And say I think Saquon's gonna get a good, healthy workload this year as long as he could stay healthy. Also, keep in mind when he got hurt, he like rolled like rolled on someone else's ankle. It's kind of a freak injury, but I think he's gonna be heavily utilized in this offense, uh, especially in the passing game. You also bring in Matt uh, Breda, who's just dude flies. He's fast. Uh, but what I like is they add some spice. They add a little little muscles saquon's this kind of like great all around back you got your speedster and beretta you get gary brightwell who came out of arizona he's just this power back no nonsense runner again when it comes to your playmakers variety is the spice of life you want you want each guy to do something different than the next and oh man if they keep a fourth running back dude i really hope it's joshua uh or jashan corbin excuse me ja like J I freaking love Corbin. Like, he dealt with injuries earlier in his career uh, when he was at Texas A&M before transferring to Florida State. But the dude can move. Uh, I thought he was a sleeper in this class. Ends up going UDFA, but uh, he might be a, he might might be a sleeper to make the roster just because he's got return capabilities. So you got your running backs there. I think it's a solid group. It's not the best, but I think it's solid, especially with Saquon like uh heading the group there and then a receiver i didn't under like for me Kadarius tony and wandale robinson are the same are same type of role players might be like oh wandale he's a much better vertical threat uh and then i'd be like well Kadarius, i you could say he's better after the catch like these these are guys that are very similar they're they're undersized and you're gonna have to scheme these guys open so that that I was kind of like, I feel like they really, really do a bit of the same. Uh, Sterling Shepard's really at his best when he's in the slot. And honestly, with Kadarius, Tony, and Wandale Robinson, those are kind of slot guys in my opinion. So I thought that was a bit interesting. Kenny Galladay is more of this vertical, big body. Uh, no touchdown last year. Maybe, maybe you do it this year. I don't think he got a touchdown last year. Not positive. Don't quote me. I just remember he was dropped in many fantasy football leagues. But yeah, looking for maybe a bounce back year. Uh you got Darius Slayton, nice vertical speed speed, speedy vertical threat. Uh then Richie James, just a, a man's man. I'll just say that. He's that, that type of receiver. And I think that's the six they keep. I think maybe there's an outside shot that Robert foster six of the roster he's got some ties to 
Brian DeBall as well. But it's fine. It's not the best receiving group, but it's fine. It's fine. They got guys that can create after the catch. I'm okay with that. And then you look at the tight end, and it's not great. Like, Ricky Seals-Jones is always this candidate to break out each and every year for whatever roster he's on. He just never does. He's probably going to get the start here. I think there's a there's an outside shot that Daniel Bellinger ends up being the starter, sees some, sees some significant time because that, that, that cat was good at the Senior Bowl. And just a very good, very good receiving threat. Uh, they also bring in Jordan Atkins from Houston, who's got, who had similar upside coming into the league as a Daniel Bellinger. So there, there's spots to be like encouraged about. They even have uh, Austin Allen, who I liked out of uh, that was the Nebraska cat, right? Dude's like six seven, six nine. I don't know, ridiculous height, but it's got some sick ball skills. But overall, the offense it's better than last year. Yes. How much better? Mm, don't really know. I, For me, I just don't have a lot of faith in Danny Dimes. And, of course, you got Tyrod Taylor, who's one of the most, just one of the better backups in the NFL. So I, I suppose we'll see. Like, I feel like it's a step in the right direction. It's just you're not quite there yet. So on to the defense because this defense is being coached by, oh, Don Martindale. And if you know about Don Martindale – then you know it's blitz, 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 blitz. That's kind of his thing. He's a blitz-heavy type of guy. His blitz rate's been in the top six uh, the last four seasons. Aside from an injury-plagued Baltimore team last year, his defense has finished in the top six in points allowed and yards allowed. So the prior three seasons, two last seasons, so 2020, 2019, and 2018. Now, he's very creative with uh, how he blitzes. Uh, he often asks his corners or his coverage players to play his cover zero, cover one. With the exit of James Bradbury, it's really going to be interesting to see how much he trusts the secondary. And I guess we could start there with the secondary because, in my opinion, he, there's a lot of slot guys on this team, a lot of sub package corners not a lot of guys that could play the outside i imagine yes aaron robinson is going to be their other outside corner aside uh on the other side of a dory jackson who i'm a big fan of when healthy he's really good but aaron robinson came in he doesn't have ideal length which uh if you're gonna be playing playing in press a bit that's not ideal but i mean the dude played as much slot as he did on the outside last year which I think he's still still he was probably in like the 200 to 300 snap range last year. I'm not encouraged by that, and it's not like he's got there's other guys that can really play on the outside behind them. Like okay, they got Maurice uh, was a Condi. I don't know that cat's been in the league forever. At least feels like forever. Uh, Radarius Williams, who they drafted last year, who is actually a pretty solid depth piece. But they got Cordell Flott, who they drafted this year. They got Darnay Holmes, who they drafted two years ago. They got uh, Julian, even Julian Love playing safety. He's a guy that actually played pretty well in the slot. So it's just, it feels like they got a ton of slot guys. They got a ton of sub package players in the secondary. But Darnay Holmes, I think he's going to probably get the nod at slot as uh, Flott kind of fills out his frame. The dude, he's got like good size at six foot but he doesn't have like good weights like he's like one what 165 170 you want you gotta put some meat on the bones brah but yeah i'm a little hesitant at the corner position right now with how well i feel like this team can do uh the secondary actually looks pretty darn good like the safety position like joy and love i'm a big fan of uh, xavier mckinney really came into his own last year they brought in dane belton out of iowa who you know you're getting a very uh very disciplined uh safety there which doesn't surprise me that brian daybull liked a guy like dane belton because i feel like belton's kind of like cut from the same cloth as guys like micah hyde and uh Boyer, so that one makes sense to me. They also, uh, as a UDFA, I think Yus Yusuf Corker, he's an interesting box option, but uh, 
I don't feel great about the secondary. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't feel great about it. But I do feel great about this pass rush. Starting with Kayvon Thibodeau. Fantastic. Fan freaking tastic. He was edge one for some people. Uh, I think he he was basically him and Hutch were one A one B. If if you rathered one over the other, I don't I don't care. They were both great. Uh, a guy that I loved, Aziz Ojolari, had a pretty banger year, but he needs to get consistent pressure. His pressure rate wasn't all that great last year, even though the sack numbers were. But still, a guy that just comes off the edge with a lot of juice. They have a. Uh, uh, DPR and Quincy Roche, another guy that just flies off the edge, but not someone you're going to ask to play run defense. Jihad Ward is actually a pretty solid rotation player they have there coming from Jacksonville. O'Shane, uh, I think it's pronounced O'Himes? I don't know, former ODU uh, edge player. Another guy that's actually a pretty good, uh, I would say, rotation guy there if anything a good depth guy so the pass rush i think yes it's on the way up and then looking at the d line a guy dexter lawrence who uh, another dude i think he's he's more than just a space eater he's got a little pass rush upside to him he just needs to tap into it he will i believe he will one day uh leonard williams pretty solid uh five tech there uh, they also bring in Jalen Holmes, who actually uh, I kind of like. I liked him back when he was in. Uh, let me make sure I'm thinking of the same guy. Uh, this is the cat from Minnesota, right? It says New Orleans, but I could be thinking of of uh, what's his name? No, no, no. Yeah, they drafted out of Minnesota. Okay, thought so. Thought so. So originally from Minnesota, I thought he looked good in the appearances he made for Minnesota. But yeah, he comes in here as good depth. Uh, they do have uh, Justin Ellis, who's just a constantly good player to have as a uh, depth rotation piece. Um, wherever he's been, Baltimore, Oakland. They were still Oakland at the time. But uh, they bring in, they drafted DJ Davidson, who they list him here at nose tackle. He ain't playing nose tackle. That dude's another guy that's probably going to be a five tech. Uh, they bring in Christopher Hinton as a UDFA. Don't know if he makes the roster, but another guy that has upside. Really shouldn't have declared. Should have waited another year. He really needed another polish. I didn't even mention Ellerson Smith uh at the edge position uh rookie they got or not a rookie but a second year player now out of northern iowa yeah it's just they got solid depth at edge and i, th I think this team's gonna create some havoc in the backfield they might make things a bit easier on the secondary and then the linebacker position this is one of the more meh bleh, meh Linebacker positions. I guess that's just a New York team thing. The Jets, their linebacker position is pretty bad too. But Blake Martinez returns and uh he's a bit of an overhyped guy because he gets a lot of like his tackle stats through the roof. But he doesn't he's not one to make splash plays in coverage. He's coming off the injury last season, but he's not one to make splash plays in coverage. He is a guy that will be that will make stops. He'll be like, hey, listen, if you're gonna catch the ball on me. You're not going to go anywhere. So I'll let you catch underneath for like four to six yards all day. That's kind of his game. But he's a very good run stuffer. Uh, Tate Crowder, he probably ends up as a starter, but he really shouldn't. He really shouldn't. Uh, Micah McFadden makes all the sense of the world why they drafted him. One of the better blitz, blitz and linebackers in the draft. Makes 100% sense why... Don Martindale would want a guy like him in the building. And he actually has a few guys in here that used to play edge now that, that moved to linebacker. Carter Coughlin, who at Minnesota was more of this edge player. Darian Beavers, who actually played edge for Connecticut before transferring to Cincinnati and moved into more of a linebacker role. So these guys with undersized edge builds, but decent enough coverage skills. Cam Brown is kind of a kind of a very good athlete just off and on not a great football player but the defense i think it, for me leaves a lot of pause a lot of hesitation i don't feel great about this defense i feel good about the pass rush i don't feel great about what it the secondary holding up i still think they're missing pieces and they just don't have a guy in that secondary yet 
So, uh, I, I guess we get to the part of the video where I come up with my projected starters. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, you're, you don't know how I do this. I go, I don't do it based on your base defenses. I do it based on who I think, who's going to get the most snaps, who's going to see the field the most, because that's going to dictate wins and losses. Who's on the field a hell out of the time. So starting with the offense, I got obviously Danny Dimes, Saquon. I think those are given. Kenny Galladay. And I put Sterling Shepard and Kadarius Tony. Like I for me, it's like Tony or Robinson. And I don't really list out a slot guy because Sterling Shepard's a guy that can play on the outside, play in the slot. Kadarius Tony, maybe you can say the same thing, but not so much. Uh, I got Ricky Seals Jones. Watch out for Daniel Bellinger. Watch out. And then they have four new starters on the offensive line, or at least I'm hoping because Shane Lemieux, you don't want that cat started. But I got Andrew Thomas. I got Joshua Ezwudu. Hopefully I'm getting that right. John Palaciano. Got Mark Glowinski and Evan Neal going to the defense. Kayvon Thibodeau. And he is actually the only guy I have as a new, at least a new player to the roster that's going to be seeing starters starting snaps because aziz leonard williams dexter lawrence tay crowder blake martinez dory jackson aaron robinson darnay holmes uh xavier mckinney julian love they were all here last year so i don't feel great about tay crowder i don't really know who who steps in for him like I don't think Micah McFadden might be a three. I don't think he's a, really a three-down guy. Darren Beavers was a guy I was higher on than the consensus, obviously, going to the sixth round. But is he a guy that's going to make a name on the roster? Uh, I don't know, but I don't feel great about the defense, but I do think the pass rush, at least the uh, defensive line, uh, is definitely headed in the right direction. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to – how I think this team will do. I got them at 5 and 12. And Giants fans aren't going to like that. It is what it is. Again, I think the ceiling for this team is maybe like 7 or 8 wins. And that's if all things go extremely well for the squad. But I think they're going to be sitting around at 5 and 12. I really do. Uh, I guess we could take a look at the Skeddy. Excuse me, moi, man, my nose is stuffed. I got to clear my nose after this. But uh, they got an opener against the tight ends. Uh, Carolina, they were hot at the beginning of the year last year, so that's not a that's not like a gimme win. Uh, I do have them winning a home game over the Cowboys. I think the, them and the Cowboys, like, I think this whole division basically is, basically is going to win against one another. That's just the NFC East for you. Uh, the Bears, so it's not like they have the hardest – like first five games like tight ends cowboys are probably their toughest matchup so it's not that bad uh but then you get this tough little streak where you got to go to green bay and then you play baltimore uh i got them being jacksonville and seattle before the bye then they open with the texans you might be like what they can beat the texans yeah they can beat the texans sure 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 but i think this texas team is going to be a bit better this year, I got them losing to Detroit. So easily you could throw those two there. And you got seven wins. But, uh, yeah, like, they're fortunate enough to face the AFC South, which you got Jacksonville and Tennessee still kind of like at the beginning of their rebuilds. Uh, I mean, you're going to be facing the, the, the NFC East. So, uh, it's highly likely you probably go three and three in conference play. So, I I mean, that could be five wins there. Carolina, maybe they're bad. Maybe they're just bad all year this year instead of just like after the six, first six games, perhaps. So, Seahawks, like, I, I mean, I could, I realist, like, I, I think you could stretch this to maybe six wins. I don't know. Me personally, I, I wouldn't bet on them anything higher than six wins if the over under is six and a half i'm taking the under i'm just gonna do it but yeah that's how i feel about the giants but they're gonna be in a good spot again next year where they can draft more more talent and just keep adding to this roster this roster is taking a step in the right direction they just gotta figure out that quarterback position get an answer on daniel jones is he a guy worth 
moving forward with once they have that answer then cool but until then it's really like i don't think danny dimes is it but let me know what you think in the comment section below i love the comment section so much so much just as one one football guy to another just giving my own opinion I love the foot. I love. I love the comment section. Just telling me how true fans know their teams so well. You blinded. You blinded. Or maybe you're not. Like I said, I got this big wooden L here because I'm always ready to take the L on my opinion. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, and do that YouTube thing as always. Until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.